And I have seen what they accomplish, and I've also seen what they don't accomplish. The problem with that approach is that it leads to forgetting the goal. So that's why I won't do it. Yeah, I think I'm an open source guy. Well, but no wonder you open source people always say that I would be more successful <coughs> if I joined them. Well, what they mean is I would achieve more of what they want if I joined them. Uh, but I, I'm not trying to achieve it's, that. It's, it's just that uh, if, uh, if uh, all software would be free, as you say, then I think too little of these people here will make uh, a living. Well, that's a side issue. Uh, nobody's justified in making a living by mistreating other people. There are businesses that are evil and should not be allowed to continue. And not just in the software field. You know, the banksters created a financial crisis by corrupting governments to deregulate them. And the oil and coal companies are driving civilization towards total destruction by their control of governments, which they're using to prevent any serious efforts to stop global heating. So the tendency of governments to obey businesses that are doing destructive things is something we see in all areas of life. I am not willing to tolerate evil, non-free software merely so that some people will make money. And it's a fairly small fra number of people. It's a fairly small fraction of programmers even. Most paid programming work is development of custom software. One client wants to use that software and that client is going to have to pay because nobody's going to write that software without being paid. Volunteers write interesting software. They don't write the stuff that some company wants. They could, but they won't do it unless they're paid. So the result is that most programmers' work is not development of proprietary software products. It's custom software. Well, if all software were free, the same clients would still want those same programs and they'd still pay for them. So, the, so you're, you're, you're the disaster for the, the tiny disaster that you're worried about wouldn't even happen. Well, if if that I, I hope that doesn't happen. If, uh, well, we know it wouldn't because it's you know the custom software is around ninety percent of software to paid software development. So then we don't have a, a problem to worry about. Thanks for being here. But even if we did, that could not justify proprietary software. If companies are making poisonous food, and we wanted to ban that poisonous food, and the company said, but look how many people would lose their jobs. Would that be a reason to tolerate the poisonous food? Obviously not. Also stops the development of the knowledge of 
the whole yes, the it whole appears society. that it appears that there is economic research showing that in a field with incremental innovation, the, a patent system is likely to reduce the investment in research. So uh, the assumption that the pro-patents, that the, the, the uh, promoters of software patents make, which is that no matter how much harm they do, at least they promote progress, should not be believed. Thank you very much. Uh, how should programmers and developers cover their living expenses? Well, I don't know why they... Maybe they have to get some other kind of job. <laughs> a person who says, I, I want to make money as a programmer and the only job I can get is proprietary software development, therefore I am justified in making proprietary software is wrong. That argument is not valid. My response to him is that that's the same argument pickpockets make and uh, muggers and the banksters that have uh, swindled people out of billions of dollars. They're all making the same argument that we want to make money and we can't make so much money if we don't do this nasty practice, so we have to be allowed to do it. I don't think that's a valid kind of argument. Proprietary software shouldn't exist. It's no contribution to society because only people who are foolish will use it. So uh, it can't be justified. And besides, today, there is a big problem of unemployment in Europe and the US. Many millions of people are unemployed. How many of them are programmers? Maybe a few percent? Which means that even if we were willing to tolerate non-free software so that some programmers could have work, what about all the non-programmers who don't have work? That's where the big problem of unemployment is. It's ridiculous to tolerate injustice to give jobs to a few of the unemployed. We need a solution for all the unemployed. And the solution for all the unemployed is, is basically stimulate the economy instead of austerity. Austerity throws people out of work. Stimulating the economy is, as has been known for many decades, is what you do when there's a downturn. That's what governments are supposed to do. So, basically, the argument you're making is presuming that we ignore the unemployed people unless they happen to be programmers. No, you're wrong. As I said a few minutes ago, most paid programmers are developing custom software. And that custom software could be delivered as free software, and the client would still pay. When we buy uh, paid software, I can't hear you. When we buy a paid software, we get this, the online support from for, from that company. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, so some companies, companies we, some companies sell the support separately. Well, uh, will um, free software grant us that support? How can we be? Uh, well, first of all, we have to compare it with truth rather than a mistaken picture. Some, some companies that make proprietary software provide support to their users. Some of them charge separately for that support and some don't. With free software you can also get support, but it's unbundled. It's always part of a free market. Now, there are other users who will give you support gratis because they like helping people. If that doesn't solve your problem, you can pay for whatever support you want. And the support
support you can get with free software goes all the way to rewriting the program for you. With free software, that's a competitive market also. But if you just want somebody to solve your pain, to correct whatever problem you've got, well, there are people who will do that. The Free Software Foundation has a support, has a service list of service providers for free software. So you shouldn't be fooled by the fact that the support for, free, for proprietary software is sometimes bundled into the price of getting a copy. You are paying for the support. And you can pay for support for free software also if you want. But you're better off with free software because it's, with proprietary software, it's a monopoly that you have to pay for your support. Whereas with free software, it's a free market, a competitive market that is easy for people to enter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, have you any questions? Uh, so, has the purchaser of the GNU come back with some <laughs> <laughs> oh, There he is.